Hi everyone, my name is Doug Lauder. I work at Salesforce. Um, I work on the core sales applications. I'm a developer. And I'm going to talk about some work that we've done at Salesforce to port um, React Native to the Apple TV. Um, I actually had this working on a real device. Unfortunately, I was not able to plug it into the uh, video systems here. But just to reassure you, um, this is me testing in my hotel room with a real Apple TV on a real TV in the hotel room. It was great. I also watched Netflix on the TV. It was wonderful. <laughs> so let's get back. So this is um, the app running in the simulator. Um, one thing you'll notice that uh, when you simulate on the Apple TV, I don't know, most of you have seen an Apple TV. Um, there is no touch screen. Um, interaction is done with the, with the uh, remote trackpad. And um, there's, the manipulation can also be done with the, with the arrow keys. And so I'm going to be actually using um, arrow keys as if you had a Bluetooth keyboard connected to the Apple TV. So uh, we do support React Native at Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has a product called Mobile SDK. Um, and we allow customers to develop applications. The Mobile SDK supports the Salesforce um, auth authentication, REST APIs, and things like that. And React Native is one of the supported platforms. Um, we had a demo app uh, showing how to do this at, at uh, Dream uh, Dreamforce last year. Um, I'll skip this slide. Um, let's get to um, what tvOS is. It's very much like iOS. Um, most of the APIs are the same. The foundation APIs are the same. Most of the UI kit APIs are the same. Um, and it turns out that um, uh, most of the code that's uh, for React Native for tvOS is, is in common with iOS. However, tvOS is very different in some important ways. One of the important ways is that there are no, there's no browser and there's no web views on tvOS. Um, so solutions that involve web or involve um, Cordova, things like that, will not work on tvOS. Um, there's a lot of UI elements, um, status bar, slider switches, things like that, that also do not exist on tvOS. Um, it has a, it does not have a persistent cache for applications. Uh, you cannot persist data in the documents directory. You can persist data in the caches directory, um, but if the app um, shuts down, that data will go away. And most importantly, as I, as I just mentioned, there is no touch screen. Um, the UI input is done with the Apple TV focus engine. Um, basically, what happens is, is that if you use the arrow keys or if you use the trackpad to swipe in different directions, um, the focus engine figures out which view you are on that is um, focusable, that you can actually press on, um, and then it tries to figure out, based on the direction that you swipe or the direction that the arrow keys go, where the next view is. So, for example, um, in this, in this um, application here, I have focusable views on the left and the right. And as I switch back and forth, I don't know if, how easy it is to see on this monitor, uh, but they um, are highlighted. And when I press the select button, you go to the next one. Um, so the port for React Native TV began when we uh, were in, uh, researching the possibility of building Salesforce-based TV apps. Um, I began this work last year. Um, it has been merged to Facebook uh, master repo since um, the end of this last year. Um, it works um, in releases uh, 0.43 and later, and there's actually Travis CI in Facebook Master that um, tests at least compilation. Um, there is documentation that's actually part of uh, Facebook's official documentation now. It's at this website here. Um, let's see. And it actually will document everything that you would want to know about building, uh, what are the differences between tvOS and iOS, the code changes, some details on exactly how things are done. Um, so if you are interested in more details after this talk, I definitely recommend you check that out. All right, so one of the most important thing is that um, how do we get, um, input, user input, into the Apple TV. Um, when the focus engine decides to move from one view to another view, there are certain uh, view methods that are called. And um, in React Native, we have a new class called React TV View, which is a subclass of React View. 
and it has the correct methods to actually detect focus changes and it fires a notification to um, a special event emitter. Uh, the event emitter fires a JavaScript event that's detected by touchable.js and touchable.js receives that event and calls one of the press in or press out methods depending on whether you're moving towards that view or away from that view. And um, so basically what that means for you as React Native developers is that you don't have to have any special new components. The touchable highlight, the touchable opacity will just work. Um, we also include uh, something that's recommended by Apple called parallax animations. If you look at tvOS applications, um, you will notice that if you are using a trackpad to navigate from one uh, button to another, uh, the buttons will actually move. So let me, sh let me try to demonstrate that now. So if you, you notice the uh, view actually appears to move three-dimensionally, those are called parallax animations, um, and you can actually adjust those animations. We have added new properties to touchable opacity and touchable highlight called TV parallax properties, and you can actually, um, for example, this one magnifies when it's selected. This one has those properties disabled, so it won't do anything, and this is um, set up to, be, to have the default properties, and it just moves a little bit. Um, you can also, if you wish, um, have custom handling of TV remote events. Um, there is the, the same navigation event emitter that, um, th that um, detects focus events, also detects um, specific gestures on the trackpad. And you can actually register for those. And you can do it with code that looks very much like this. Um, you actually create a new instance of TV event handler in your component did, component did mount directory, uh, your component did mount uh, method. And you enable that TV handler and you put in a function that detects those events and does whatever you want depend on what the event state is. The event types um, can be up, down, left, right. You can detect the play pause event and I'm gonna show a demonstration of that now. Um, so now what you're seeing here is, the, um, is actually a tab bar iOS. Uh, many of you have used tab bar iOS maybe in your React Native applications. This is what it looks like on tvOS. Um, it actually appears at the top and it hides when you haven't navigated to it. And so let's go to the TV remote demo. And this code that I just showed you, if you look over here, it will actually show the type of event that was detected. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, some UI tips. If you're building for tvOS, um, you'll want to use much larger sizes for fonts and views. Uh, typical, what I've discovered in trying to build these applications is that you need to make your font sizes, um, your view sizes, images and things like that should be at least two to three times bigger than they would be on, on the phone. Uh, we do re I would definitely recommend Tabbar iOS for top level navigation. Um, and there's another important thing to remember if you have list views, um, the, one of the common um, UI patterns in tvOS is list views in a grid layout. And list views um, should have a property set that called remove clip subviews. You should set it to false. It's set to true and that's uh, an important optimization for phone apps because it means that um, views that are not showing up on the actual screen are actually remo removed from the view hierarchy. And that's a very important optimization. Unfortunately, that does not work well on tvOS, and I'll show you why. So you'll see on this screen you have um, the list view grid example. This is the same example that's actually part of the React Native repo. It's in the RN tester app. And I have two versions of it showing on this screen. One, the one on the left, is the one you don't want. It's where it has the default property of React, remove clip subviews equals true. And if I start trying to scroll, it goes crazy. It goes all over the place because um, tvOS needs those views to be there so that the focus engine can actually find the correct next view. If you go over here, this actually, as you move the arrow key down or if you use the trackpad, uh, you see a smooth scrolling animation from one view to the next.
And there actually is um, at least one React Native app uh, application for Apple TV that actually has shipped. It's the Unsplash Viewer for Apple TV. I believe uh, Nofel, who was, spoke yesterday, is the one who actually developed that app. I don't know if he's here today, but um, thanks for doing that. And hopefully there'll be more um, TV apps in the future. And you can try it for yourself today. You basically do the same thing you would for a Greenfield app um, in iOS. You would call React Native init, awesome TV app. Um, you open a new project. Uh, but instead of just building, you actually go up to the top menu. And you will see that there is a tvOS target. And you switch to that one. And that will build for tvOS. And you can actually try it yourself in the tvOS simulator that automatically comes with Xcode. Um, and I want to thank uh, some people. First of all, I want to thank Salesforce for supporting me and doing this port. I want to really thank the Facebook React Native team uh, who actually did uh, spend a lot of time helping me get this merged into Facebook repo, and especially Peter, who did a lot of the code reviews. Um, and I also, of course, want to thank the Chain React organizers for inviting me here uh, to speak on this. Um, since I have this talk went a little bit faster than I expected it would. Let me just show some other uh, demos of um, APIs that actually do work on tvOS. Um, one important thing, uh, for example, is text input. This is the standard text input uh, that's available in React Native. It goes to a UI text input um, in uh, iOS. And they look a little bit different. When you select one of these, you will get a full screen keyboard that looks like this. And you have to actually um, drive around with the trackpad and, oops, sorry. Hmm, it's not working. Anyway, um, you can um, select a number pad uh, text input and it will do the right thing. You can play media on it, obviously. This is a um, third-party repo called React Native Media Kit, which um, basically provides a bridge to an, to a, um, to an AV, AV player. And you can toggle the controls, and you can play, play video. And the last thing I wanted to show is that um, the TV is actually great for data visualization. Um, this is a uh, data visualization API that was uh, built by Formidable, one of, the, one of the conference sponsors, called Victory Native. And um, I found that most of it just works as is, with, it, with no changes. Um, the only, this is actually one of their demos, and the only changes I made were styling changes. And uh, everything works, including the animations. The only thing that um, would not work would be things like um, user input and interaction with these views with uh, tap gestures or um, pinch gestures, things like that. Those obviously won't work on tvOS. But uh, the actual displays work great. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>